Hello, this is Bruce with another What AIO Loves About the Ocean. And ever since I got into the field of biology, I have always been fascinated with the structure of the organisms, uh, how they work, and, and their overall makeup. And that's why I'm going to do a little bit of a shark dissection. This is one of the things we typically do for the advanced sessions at AIO. And I'm going to dive into it here. I do understand people who do not want to do dissections, either because it's gross or because an animal has to be sacrificed to do it. So I can understand both of those. If you're in either category, maybe this video will suffice and you can gain some knowledge without actually taking part yourself. Let's go! I'm checking my list on what I should have, and it says here, uh, always cut the shark open with a pair of purple and pink scissors, and have appropriate footwear. Okay, I read that wrong. Um, it says, do not use purple and pink scissors, so we'll throw those away. Got to use a more appropriate set of dissection scissors that do not have pointed ends. Okay, and then I reread the appropriate footwear and what they meant is having a closed toed shoe, something like that. So if you drop something sharp, it won't impale you. So now that we've got all the safety things in order, I'm gonna go get a dogfish shark. Let's do a little bit of quick shark taxonomy. Sharks are in the class Chondrichthys and the subclass Elasmobranchii, and that excludes the Chimeras, which are also in the class Chondrichthys. The modern sharks, the sharky sharks, as I like to call them, which would exclude the flat sharks and rays, are in the group Salachii. At AIO, we typically do a spiny dogfish dissection, Squalus acanthius, which is a squalomorph shark. But today I'm going to do a smooth dogfish shark, which is in a different group, the Gallinae sharks, and a different uh, genus Mustelus canis is the scientific name of the smooth dogfish, which actually means weasel dog. And there are some differences in them. Here is a smooth dogfish at the top and a spiny dogfish at the bottom. You see a few differences here. The smooth dogfish, first of all, has an anal fin. Spiny dogfish does not. The spiny dogfish has spines, imagine that, on the dorsal fins. Spiny dogfish also has a much more prominent heterocircle tail, that is the top lobe here is much larger than the top lobe on the smooth dogfish. Also has much more visible spots right along the lateral line. Circle those two. And last it has a larger spiracle. This is the way they can get water across the gills without opening their mouth or without moving forward. The spiracle on the smooth dogfish is a tiny little pinprick behind the eye. Let's take a look externally. These guys come with the tail fin or the caudal fin cut off. It's of course a heterocircle fin, that is the sides are unequal. The bottom is, is that little flap and the top kind of extends the spinal column into the top section there. I've got a nose. If I squeeze that, I can see a little pus come out of the pores leading to the ampullae of Lorenzini. Obviously the eye, and just behind the eye is a small spiracle. allows them to pass water, even when the mouth is closed, pass water past the gills. Otherwise water comes into the mouth through the gills. Uh, the, the nares, the external nares or the nostrils, do not lead back into the throat. They just 
pick up chemical signals to the olfactory bulbs up here, and we'll see a little bit of the brain later. But the gill slits with gills deep in, obviously, right? And the pectoral fin, first dorsal fin, second dorsal fin, and then we have the pelvic fin, so back here again, pectoral, pelvic, a little bit of uh, the intestine sticking out there. These are modified pelvic fins into these really hard, tough structures called claspers. Those are found in the male. So this is a male shark. And this is also has an anal fin here. The spiny dogfish that we get in Maine does not have an anal fin and also has spines on the two dorsal fins. So there's spines on that. Uh, spiny dogfish also tends to have spots right along the lateral line. Okay. The other, the other thing that's different, uh, the, sh the teeth here, they do have a little bit of sharp edge, but they're much more kind of a crushing plate kind of tooth, so I can run my finger over there without much damage. Uh, this the teeth on the spiny dogfish, although not big triangular teeth like you would find on the great white shark, for example, uh, are quite a bit sharper and you can touch yourself. Though they're relatively small like these, uh, but much easier to cut yourself on those. All right, let's uh, open this up. I'm actually gonna do a couple, a couple little things here. I'm going to take the scalpel, which is quite sharp, pointing away from myself. I, I could see a part of the cartilage that's connecting these fins right there. I'm going to go just under that, and I'm just going to make an incision. And that way I can get a blunt nose pair of scissors in there, and, it's, and it won't damage the organs that a pointed pair would, right? And then once I get it going a little bit, I'm going to pull it apart. I might even make a side cut this way right away. That allows this to kind of open up a little bit more. And I'm cutting, kind of making sure, even though these scissors are not pointed, making sure the scissors uh, aren't pointed too far down into the organs. We don't, don't, don't want to damage those. The, the, the main organ you see right away is the liver. And we're going to get into a closer look at these. But let me open this up to spend a little more time opened it up a little closer to the head and one of the things that cartilage bar was protecting was the heart. So I see the ventricle of the heart which is right there and the darker section in the back is the atrium. Of course these guys just have a two chambered heart. And we have a four chambered heart, right? We have two atria and two ventricles. So they have, they collect the blood in the atrium this is the dark and it's behind. And then that passes to the ventricle, which is dense. It's hard to tell there, but it doesn't squeeze very much. And then that passes into the aorta, which passes up towards the, the gills. Take a look at the main organs here again, the liver. And take that off to the side. And this, here's the stomach, has a little bit of something in there. We'll take a look at what that is. The spleen down here, a little bit of the pancreas up here, and then this is the intestine that was kind of caught in there. And this is known as the spiral valve intestine. And it's a little hard to see, but there are little ridges in there. This is a male, and they've kind of come off here, but the testes, so we can actually get the testes, we should have, it should be paired organ, so there should be another one in here somewhere. 
But those are the main organs that we're going to see there. Again, we've got the heart up there. We've got the liver, the stomach, which has something in it, the spleen. Take a little bit of a closer look here as so the shark has been opened up. We have the heart up here. It's a little bit hard to see, it's very dark, but there are two chambers there. If we move down, with the largest multi lobed organ is the liver. There's one lobe there, there's another lobe off there. And then we see the expanded stomach because the stomach has something inside and we're going to open that up in just a second. And then a spleen, a little bit of a spleen down here. The, there's some other kind of prominent things in here and that's the, the large intestine, which also has some stuff inside, but it's probably well digested and quite goopy. And as I mentioned earlier, this is known as a spiral valve in the sharks and you can see some little ridges in there that indicate that. Some other interesting features you can see here, you can see kind of the layers of muscles, these ridges. This is in the side or the wall, body wall of the shark, noting all the muscles there. Up there, and we're going to try to zoom in on those under the microscope here in a minute too. A very quick look at the ampullae of Lorenzini. If you take a look at the snout of the shark, way up the top there has some gel coming out of these very tiny pores leading to the electroreception organs, which are known as the ampullae of Lorenzini. Here's my artist's rendition on the right, drawn from a picture, magnified greatly, uh, and on the left, showing individual cells, individual sensory cells at the base of these long tubes which are filled with this gel goop. So I did want to open up the stomach of this guy and see what the prey item was there. Let's move that ruler out of the way. And the liver there, the intestine, and the stomach here. Definitely something in there. Feels very fishy to me. Maybe there's two things. I'm going to make just a tiny incision right there and then cut down a little bit, open it up and look at that, look at that, let's see what we've got here, looks like something very fishy, you see the, the vertebral column of a fish and all the bones spreading off to the side, so looked like it was two or felt like it was two, but maybe it's just one that had already split a little bit. A little hard to tell what it is. There's no head left, but that's definitely the muscle of a fish. And that, that's, that's about it. There's a little bit down of the tail end there, but I think that's also a little bit left of whatever the fish was. 
Well, that's kind of interesting. I almost filled that entire stomach area. Take, also take a closer look at one of the gills here. So we have these five gill slits, right, which are allowing water to pass out, because water's gonna come in the mouth and pass out the gills. Little kind of feathery ends are the lamellae of the gill, and my thumb is on the gill arch. So there's the gill arch, that kind of, well, U-shaped like that. Region through the spinal column there and take a look a little bit deeper at that. And of course you can see the muscle tissue on the edge, but what I'm looking at is just that center, but we're gonna need a little bit of magnification to see that better.